And today we're talking about living Dharma in the modern world. So we, we've read the Bhagavad Gita, we know what Bhagwan Krishna is teaching us in Kurukshetra. We know what these teachings are in a battlefield thousands and thousands of years ago. But what about today? What does that mean? <clears throat> What does that mean for us today? And interestingly, what you'll find is that the teachings that Bhagwan Krishna gave to Arjuna, gave to us rather, through Arjuna, are exactly the same teachings we need today. When we say Sanatan Dharma, that Sanatan, that word that means eternal, it's not only eternal in time. It doesn't mean only it was true 5,000 years ago and it's true today. But it also is eternal in space. It is just as true in Los Angeles, in New York, in Toronto, in Vancouver, in London, in Tokyo, in Paris, as it was in Kurukshetra. And so Bringing that dharma into our world really is just about taking these, these eternal teachings and asking ourselves, what does that mean in our life today? I had somebody just last night in satsang. Each evening after the sacred Ganga Arati, I have this beautiful blessing and privilege opportunity to lead the satsang. And just last night, somebody asked me, with all of the challenges of the modern world, how can we not get angry? And I mention it here because what the question implied when it was asked is that things in the world are such that we cannot help but get angry. Obviously, we're going to be angry. Look what's happening. And this idea that somehow, we are puppets in the hands of the companies, the corporations, the media, the society, the community, that somehow holding on to the depth of who we are, living dharmically, that somehow that is this extraordinary, unprecedented challenge today. But the truth is, even though the situation is different, the teaching is the same. And the core situation is the same. But one Krishna gives us the answer in one line. I mean, he gives 700 verses of exquisite answers. But one line for me, when you think about living dharma and bringing it into our lives, into the world, when he teaches us, remember me, meaning, not just remember Krishna, but remember that. This is all my Leela. Don't get so wrapped up in it. Don't get so stuck. Remember, you're just playing a role. Play it well. Play it sincerely. Play it fully. Yudhyacha, fight the war with the best that you have. Do the best you have. Give it your fullest. But remember, remember this is just my Leela. And this for me is really the, the core way of not only bringing Dharma into our life, but bringing peace, bringing happiness, bringing success. Because we've got these definitions of success that to me are all wrong. If you say, oh, very successful, very successful person, what does it mean? Well, to most of us these days, sadly, it means they make a lot of money. It means they've got a big house, they've got a bunch of cars, they wear really expensive clothes. Bada Admi, Bada Admi. But if you actually go back, Bada Admi was not the rich guy in the community. Bada Admi was the one 
जिसमे ज्ञान है the one with the wisdom the one with the clarity the one with the depth the one with the piety bhagwan ka aadmi those two were synonymous bhagwan ka aadmi bada aadmi same today we've lost that today we've gotten into this idea that success is just what we achieve and the dilemma of course with this is that as we achieve more and more we actually lose so much we're taking antidepressants we're taking anti anxiety medicine people have started drinking using drugs fighting in the families scrolling aimlessly on social media because we're frustrated we're bored we're losing ourselves we're gaining everything but we're losing ourselves mahatma gandhi ji said so beautifully what is the point of that fast speed that has no direction and dharma brings us back into the direction dharma says do not lose yourself hey remember it's not about the speed it's about the direction dharma reminds us that we are here to live according to our deep truth and if we do we are protected yes challenges happen of course there's no scripture there's no katha there's no guru i know who ever says if you are spiritual bad things won't happen chant god's name do puja do meditation read the gita and nothing bad will ever happen kahini likha hai the nature of nature is that people get sick people die you get fired from your jobs houses burn down earthquakes happen tsunamis happen hurricanes happen life happens it's the nature of nature but what we are assured by all of the scriptures is meditate do your japa read the scriptures be spiritual and although life will happen life will go up and down but you will not you will stay anchored and grounded dharmo rakshati rakshita when we protect dharma dharma protects us when we commit to dharma live according to dharma that dharma protects us when i first came to rishikesh very beginning i was 25 years old i had a very very good western education but i didn't know anything anything about sanatan dharma anything about india other than that they make very good vegetarian food and puja swami ji gave me a beautiful a beautiful mantra in the beginning and the mantra was engage yourself in karma under the shade of dharma with an awareness of brahma and it was simple it was easy it was mostly in english and he gave me this as the way first of all of teaching me what karma and dharma and brahma meant but also in really helping me understand what our dharma teaches engage yourself in karma again this is yudhya cha fight the war do your duty this is not the time for anyone to sit this one out the world situation right now needs all hands on deck the hunger the poverty the human rights abuses the homelessness the crime the violence the war climate change environmental destruction it needs all of us fully engaged so engage yourself in karma don't sit this one out 
I remember growing up in Los Angeles back in the 80s. There was a really big thing that people would say, which was, don't be a human doing, be a human being. You're not a human doing, you're a human being. And it was really just an excuse to basically lie at the beach all day and do nothing. I remember when I was a teenager, my friends would say, or they would read it somewhere. We didn't have social media at that time, but kahina kahina, they would hear it. They'd say, we're not human doings. Relax. Just lie on the beach. Come to the party. Watch the movie. Don't worry. Just be. But that's not actually the teaching. The teaching is not forsake doing in order to be. And the Bhagavad Gita makes that abundantly clear. The Ramayana makes that abundantly clear. The entire Mahabharata makes it abundantly clear. The Upanishads make it abundantly clear. All of our scriptures that are giving us specific teachings make it very clear. We are not meant to push away doing. But what we are meant to do is bring being into doing. So we're doing, but we are being. Remember me and fight the war. There's a beautiful line in our prayers here at Paramarth Nikathan every morning that I love that says, Mukhome ho ram nam, ram seva hat me. On our lips, we are chanting God's name. And in our hands, we are doing God's work. Same teaching. Just a different author, different time. So engage yourself in karma. Righteous action, right action, selfless action. Under the shade of dharma. Well, when we speak about dharma in this way, we've got really two aspects of dharma, and they're both equally important. One is what you could call the universal dharma. This is the do's and don'ts of a, a good life. They actually line up perfectly with the yam and niyam of the Patanjali Yoga Sutras. Right? Live in nonviolence, ahimsa. Live truthful lives. Don't hoard, don't steal. Be a good person. Live with generosity, live with compassion, live with purity. Right? These are, this is what you would call universal dharma. If you say this is a very dharmic person, it means that they live in honesty, in sharing, in caring, in selflessness. But then we also have our individual dharma. And that's just as important. Bhagwan Krishna gave this teaching to Arjuna. Because Arjun's dharma, as a kshatriya, as a warrior, was to fight. Each of us has individual dharma. We've come, we've come onto this earth, our individual jivatma, with our individual karmic package, our individual sukshma sharir, our subtle bodies. Our minds, our intellect, our ego, all of that that has traveled with us from lifetime to lifetime. We are here to work that out. We're here to become free. And not everybody is going to become free, engaged in exactly the same actions, in the same way, living the same life. And this is where recognizing your own individual dharma is so important. And of course, we have so many dharmas in our life. We have the dharma as of a, a child to our parents, the dharma of a parent to our children, the dharma of a husband or a wife if we are married. We have the dharma in our community, in our society. We have our dharma in our careers and our professions. We have different dharma at different ages of life, right? In our brahmacharya ashram phase, 
our dharma is steady, steady, steady. In our grest ashram phase, if you go that way, our dharma is have a family, earn a living, contribute to society, raise your children well. Then we have our van ashram, and the dharma there is let go. Let go. Start to free yourself from that maya. They'll take care of themselves. Start to re-anchor, refocus yourself inward. And then, of course, sannyas, ashram dharma. Whether you take it at the end of life, whether you take it early in life, that dharma of the full renunciation, not of the world, not of action, but of the, the attachment to the world, the attachment to the individual aspects. In sannyas, it's not that we abandon the family. It's that the entire world becomes the family. It's that instead of the family being just two or three or four, it's that we let go of that identification and we embrace the entire world as family, that Vasudev Kutumbaka. So in the midst of all of that, your universal dharma, your individual dharma of the different roles and relationships, your dharma based on the phases of life, in addition to all of that, we all also have our individual dharma that we are here to unfold our gifts, our longing, our inclination. And it's really important that we honor that because we're not all built the same way. We don't all come onto earth with the same karmic package, with the same opportunities, with the same skills, with the same abilities, with the same personality types. In the same way, if you study Ayurveda, an Ayurvedic doctor is going to say, oh, you've got too much pitta. Here's how you live. Here's how you eat. You have a tendency toward vata. Here's how you eat. Here's how you live. But in our dharma, we're not just three different doshas. It's an infinite number of different ways of manifesting. And it's so important to give ourselves the freedom to actually live that and not to try to always become. Right? We lose, we lose so much of our lives. And we lose our lives, we lose our peace, we lose our happiness, and we lose the opportunity to embrace our dharma. I remember when I had come to India on what I thought was just a short trip with a backpack, just an adventure. But when I discovered and realized that this is where I was meant to be, when I went back and I told everyone that I was moving back to India, people told me, you're crazy. Don't do that. Don't do that. You will regret it. Finish your PhD. Get yourself settled. Make a name for yourself. Then you want to take one or two years and do some kind of Peace Corps situation. They said, no problem. But don't do it now. They hadn't realized the spiritual power of living your dharma. They hadn't realized that power of actually being connected to exactly how you are meant to live. And so what most of us do is we do just unko kush karna. Cello, they say not to do it, okay. No problem, you must know best. And we lose that opportunity in our lives. So dharma means also embrace, embody, your truth. It may not be the same as someone else's truth. And that's okay. 
There is such a gorgeous variety in life. Go through any flower garden, go through any fruit orchard, travel through the mountains, travel through nature. Sit in an airport and just watch all the people. And what you'll see is just variety, variety, variety. It means God loves variety, loves diversity. So in your lives and in your children's lives and in the lives of all of those who look up to you for wisdom, for guidance, for mentoring, make sure that you don't impose your agenda that you don't assume that what was right for you is necessarily right for someone else, but that you actually water the seeds of them. We're not here to dictate what type of tree will grow. We are here to water the seeds, here to bring the sun, so that whatever seed that is, it will sprout, it will grow. And that's the best way to both live our individual dharma and also help our youth really embrace their dharma. And lastly, just going back to the beautiful mantra that Puja Swamiji had given me, engage yourself in karma under the shade of dharma with that awareness of Brahma. And of course it means an awareness of the divine, an awareness of the supreme. And that takes us back to what I was saying in the beginning about when Bhagwan Krishna says, Mom knew smart. Remember me, yes, as in remember me as Bhagwan Krishna. But also remember. Remember that truly and ultimately there is nothing but God. Nothing but God. And that means that our individual stresses and strains and problems and difficulties and challenges and desires, they're nothing. And I don't mean to undermine it, but I mean to help you see the truth that we've been given. Remember God. That awareness of the divine that awareness of the perfection of the divine, the infinite nature of the divine, makes us realize that getting stuck in traffic or even getting fired from our job or our kid failing an exam, these are just, they're just momentary blips on this particular scene in this entire divine drama in which we've been given our own sacred roles to play. So don't lose yourself in the role. Don't forget that you're not the role, that you are the actor playing the role. We forget. We get caught up. I am this. I am that. I need this, I need that. Jasse me chati hun, jab me chati hun. Just say me chati hun, just the say me chati hun. And we believe that that's true. As I think, I think everyone should think. But we forget that these are just, they're just blips. And we are here as the actor on this particular scene, playing this particular role. But then the curtain will fall. We'll take off the costume. We'll burn the script. And then we'll play another role next time. And the point is not to forget who you are in the role. The point is not that your face should get glued to the mask that you're wearing. The point is that at every moment, playing that role, we remember and remember and remember that we are not the role. 
we are soul with this incarnation. And as Bhagwan Krishna says, Mom knew smart, it means remember me, but it also means remember you, the real you, your true self, because that true self is one with the divine. So we remember God, remember ourself, and we fight the war. We do our duties. And it's just just as applicable, just as important, just as powerful today as on the battleground of Kurukshetra.